Hi there, my name is Brooks from Character Design Forge. It seems at times like a creative person's most valuable resource is ideas. Somewhat frustratingly, well-meaning people may ask you where do you get the idea for this, as though ideas are tangibly plucked from one specific and singular tree of sorts. Of course, ideas are more abstract than that, and sometimes it can be difficult to find them in the first place. Last week we talked about what to do when you have too many ideas, which may seem like the best problem to have, especially if you're coming to this video because of how you feel, that you don't have ideas or inspiration to create something when you sit down to create. Well, you're definitely not alone. It's a struggle that I've seen with almost a majority of people at some point. It's very common to draw a blank when it comes to ideas. In fact, here's what Galactic Artist said under my Days When You Just Can't Draw video. He said that my problem isn't what to draw or mostly how it turns out. My problem is how to get motivated and inspired to draw, because that's when my work turns out the best. But even if I scroll through my favorite artist's gallery, or just do something that I enjoy, I just don't seem to get motivated. Maybe it's because I've gotten used to it. Do you have any tips for me? Well, I appreciate you commenting, Galactic Artist, and thanks for sharing what you're struggling with. For you, and I'm sure anyone else that's dealing with this, I want to talk about the immediate and long-term ways that you can completely eliminate this problem. So here are four things that can help. The first is to stop consuming. It seems common for people to browse other artists' work in order to prep themselves or to get inspired by it. Instagram, DeviantArt, Tumblr, Dribbble, whatever you're using. This seems like it'd work in theory, but in actuality, it puts our brains in the opposite mode from creating, which is consuming. You start to passively take things in, and you're also looking at the finished product of your favorite artists that likely took hours of time each to complete. And now you're starting with your sketchbook in front of you, and it becomes even more difficult and daunting. You need to be proactive instead of reactive. Consuming other people's work puts you on the back foot. Now, of course, we all love browsing our favorite creator's work, so why not separate that time and the time that we start creating with a buffer? Ideally, later in the evening being the time that you consume, you're able to mull things over and passively become inspired, and then sleep on them and sit down to create first thing in the morning. I'm a very big proponent of doing things first thing in the morning, and I know that there's a few of you that hate me for it by now, but it's so helpful. Going back to the routine that I outlined in my Make Time for Your Art video, wake up, and without any distractions from notifications or messages, anything that you could consume or could make you reactive, start to create. At first, you may just be doodling nonsense, but that's really a perfect place to be. Out of nonsense comes great things, so don't give up right away. The second thing that I've already started to talk about is to make a daily routine. It's so helpful to build a habit out of the time that you want to create. Give yourself a week of the same amount of time at the same time each day to sit and focus. The third thing is something that I've always found to be helpful. Simply put, make yourself uncomfortable. Work a job that you don't like or that's hard work. We all know the feeling of what we'd rather do. Perhaps the most clarity you can get on what you'd rather be doing is in a place that you don't want to be. If you feel like you're cut out to be an artist, then you have to prove it. I've gotten the most inspiration over the years from working at jobs that I either didn't like, that were difficult, or simply afforded me the mental clarity. At the vast majority of jobs, especially those involving manual labor, you aren't given time to consume or play video games or be distracted by what you want. Maybe that tells us something about the relationship between distraction and creativity. I say if you feel like you're cut out to do what you're passionate about, but you aren't at a place where you can do it immediately, instead of trying to find work closest to what you want to be doing, try spending time doing what makes you uncomfortable. Struggling to get out of your chrysalis is what makes butterflies strong. Fourth, and perhaps the most important thing that you can do to get inspired is to figure out what you are all about. What is your why? This may be something that is buried deep inside of you, or it's something you haven't quite figured out yet. It's possible that this could change later, and that's okay. Basically, why do you feel compelled to create things? What is your end goal? Not along the lines of a finished illustration or short film, not a milestone goal, but what is your purpose and drive to create? You can start with what motivates you and refine it over time to create your big why. I know for me, if you haven't noticed, I love characters. And more specifically, I love characters and environments that have an inherent mystery and wonder, something a little bit outside of our world, but born of things like the forest and far-off lands. I love variety of characters and characters with interconnected stories, and I want to create my own to share with people. Once you've articulated your why, perhaps written down in front of you, everything you make can support that. 
Over time, you'll assuredly be able to refine and redefine that why down into a purpose. From there, everything you make can be true to that, and inspiration will come to you more and more easily. I know that by following these steps, ideas, which sometimes feel like the most difficult commodity to come by, will start to flow freely. That's it for me today, but hold on for one second. Either underneath this video or in a tweet or reply, I want you to write, the biggest thing holding me back is, and then of course write the thing personally holding you back the most. I'm making new videos every week at characterdesignforge.com, subscribing on YouTube lets you know when those videos are available. We've got some exciting things planned for my website, more of a unification of the various things I'm putting out. And of course, the Learn Character Design course, which if you haven't heard of yet, is a comprehensive character design course for both beginners and established artists. You can head over to learncharacterdesign.com and sign up to be notified when that becomes available. Thank you for watching and have fun creating.